chapter 30, book of Numbers. This week's Torah portion begins with a description of vows and the procedure for annulling them. Of course, our most famous procedure for annulling vows occurs at the beginning of the Yom Kippur service during the haunting prayer of Kol Nidre. It's important, though, to realize what Kol Nidre is and what it isn't. If you make a vow to repay a loan or to do something for someone or in a business deal, you've got to keep that promise. Kol Nidre doesn't wipe it out. To claim that Jews don't keep their word because they wipe out all their vows in Kol Nidre is a bunch of anti-Semitic hogwash. So what is Kol Nidre and what is this total portion all about? What types of vows are we annulling? The types of vows that add on religious obligations. For example, we have an obligation to give between 10 and 20% of our net income to charity. Suppose someone in a moment of religious fervor vows to give 30 or 40% and then suffers a financial downturn. That's the type of vow that would have to get annulled and that's the type of vow that we're talking about. Also important is to realize the painful history of Kol Nidre. Back in the 7th century, the Jews were getting persecuted, as we were so often during our history, this time by the Visigoths in Spain. And we were being forced to convert under threat of death. Jews were forced to take oaths of conversion. And so the rabbis instituted the Kol Nidre prayer, wiping out vows to welcome these Jews back to the fold, to reassure them that those vows had not taken effect, or that if they were forced to take them in the future, they wouldn't take effect. Think of how serious those Jews took their word, took their vows. They were worried that vows made under threat of death had taken effect and had to be wiped out. Contrast that with how casual, how cavalier we are about our oaths, about our vows. How often when you're trying to convince someone of something that you say, I swear it's true, you shouldn't do that. And how often do we use four-letter swear words like drat or darn or, well, you get the picture. I heard a story recently about a rabbi who was so careful about his words that if he'd walk into someone's house during a rainstorm, dripping wet, and someone would say, oh, it's raining out, he'd say, well, it was a minute ago when I was outside. Not because he was being sarcastic, but because he was so careful. He was worried maybe in the minute that had just elapsed, it had stopped raining. If only we could be that careful. Now, that may be too serious a level for us to get to that rabbi's level, but can't we at least work on reducing our use of swear words? Mm -hmm.